So I've got a little problem. I've got a hole in the boat right here. This hole was already here when I bought the boat. What I'm gonna do is put this little rod holder in here. The hole is this size. I need the hole to be this size. So I don't know if this is gonna work. I saw a little trick on YouTube where you use this, put it inside here, but I have to step up from this hole saw to this hole saw. So this one has to stick out just a little bit before this one starts to bite down. Um, I doubt it's gonna work, but we'll see. I got these washers to put on. The, I don't think those are gonna work. So, uh-oh, where'd I put the... All right, this nut. So what you have to do is put this one on. This slides on here first. My hands are shaking because I've had too much coffee, not enough breakfast, and it's cold out. So we're gonna put that on. We're gonna try to use this hose gasket. I don't think it's gonna work. Okay, we might have something. I don't think this is how it's intended to be used. We're gonna give it a shot. I think that might might give us something. So if you see, a little bit of a step up. Normally, you would use the drill bit to get it started before the hole saw touches the surface. But since we already have a hole in the deck of the boat, there's nothing for the drill bit to actually bite onto. Hopefully, get this started with this hole saw. The boat has a little bit of an angle here. We're kind of at a terrible spot. But um, we're just going to give it a go. It's a work boat, right? It doesn't have to look pretty. It's just got to work. Let's get the drill. I don't know if this is going to work, but we're going to give it a shot. So we'll see. And uh, safety first. OK, we're just going to go for it, I guess. Yeah, that's that's not working out so great. But Maybe I have the worst hole saw ever. Because this sucks. It's pretty thick. All of this is fiberglass. Very itchy. Notice the long sleeves. So what we're gonna do, get it out of here. Where do we want? Where do we want? We want a little bit. So we don't want it straight back. We don't want it straight out. We want it kind of like 45. So I think I think I like that. And that'll have to do. Because it's a work boat. It just has to work. Um, it doesn't have to be pretty. This rod holder came with this fancy little collar and 
rubber gasket thing like this to close and seal up the hole when you're not using it. But this is going to break eventually. I know that's going to happen. Um, it's inevitable. I don't really need it anyways. So what I'm going to do is cut it flush right here. Just like that. It works fine. And in a year when this would break anyways, I at least know now that it's nice and flush. We're going to install it with this rubber gasket seal. This metal piece goes on top. And we're going to put some silicone up in here. Call it a day. But first, we've got to pre-drill these holes. So you're probably asking, why did I just go with screws instead of through bolting the entire rod holder? Well, I don't do much fishing on this boat. It's a crab boat. My plan for this rod holder is to stick like a flagpole in it. Um, so it's not gonna get worked or tweaked very much. And I basically just need to put something in it and have it sit there. It's not getting like rocked or worked with a pole in it or something if you're fishing. So that's just why I'm going with screws it's going to sit in here. It's going to hold it down secure as much as I need it to. And that's it. All right, we got our holes drilled. Now we're going to apply some silicone around here. I probably have like five of these around my house, but every time I need to go use one, I can't find it. I end up just buying another one, um, which you can never have too many of these at the house, especially when you do projects on your boat like I do do is put them in the screw holes for one so that way when the screws go in it uses the silicone in the threads and it seals it up nice and tight Let's actually apply it to the bottom of this gasket here we will see how well that works. And then we're also gonna put a whole bunch in these gaps right here because it doesn't make boat. Sure. All right, now we're gonna put this on top. We're gonna thread these screws in by hand just to get them started. Make sure everything's lined up correctly. feels better okay let's put a little more in here and what's gonna happen when I screw this down it's gonna squeeze out some of that silicone make it nice and tight Ooh. I'm going to take a leaf and scoop up the excess because that's how we do it around here. So that's our new rod holder. It's not the prettiest thing because there's a little gap there, but you know what? It's going to work. So, my drill's on fire. Uh, I was trying to drill this second hole and, uh, oh shoot, a ton of junk just came flying in my face. Let me put my glasses on. I think I need a new drill. That sucks. All right, well, good thing I have a, an impact drill, I guess.
Bummer. All right, well. I wonder what happened. Oh, I've used this drill a lot, but did think it should catch on fire. All right, well, let's keep going. Luckily, I've got another drill. See if we can finish what we started. We'll see. I don't know how great this camera angle is, but whatever. I think maybe the reason the drill, I think maybe the reason the drill caught on fire is because the hole saw sucks. That could be it, overworking the drill. Who knows? We finished, we got it. Screw holes. I should have cut the hole bigger on the silicone so it comes out easier. But whatever. This bad boy. Just like that. Light her up. I think I did a bad job. How terrible I did. Yeah, I think I did a bad job. Yeah. I don't think it's all right. It'll work. Okay. It's not beautiful, but it gets the job done. Again, it's a work boat. This is basically just gonna hold a stick inside of it. It's not, uh, it's not going to be tweaked or worked or anything because it actually doesn't have much support, especially right here. The fiberglass got a little bit thin there, but there was already a hole. So I'm actually happy that I'm sealing up the hole where the fiberglass and all that was exposed. So now it's more uh, watertight. So that's better. We've got one rod holder here, one here. This is basically the purpose that will serve just like that literally all it's gonna do have a stick like that sick all right and I got silicone all over the boat that happens every time next project number two got another uh, project we gotta we gotta fix so when I was on the boat yesterday when I get to the dock a bunch of pelicans Decide to uh, snap off my anchor light here. So you can see it just, plastic just snapped. So the objective is to replace the broken light with the brand new light. Put the new light on the existing uh, bracket here. That's not supposed to do that. We're going to cut that as close to the old light as possible. All right. Tools of the trade for today. The tools that we will be using. Uh, some electrical wiring butt connectors, heat shrink. These little guys right here. Two of these, heat shrink tubing. Always close this, because in the event you drop it, you don't lose all those pieces. Uh, some snips, some crimpers, a torch. It's hard to do left-handed, whatever. Drill, of course, the replacement 
light. Uh, you always need a pair of these. I feel like any job you ever do, you always gotta have a pair of channel locks. So the goal is to cut these wires back put the butt connectors, the heat shrink butt connectors, and then over that, we're gonna put heat shrink tubing to seal it up, make sure that it's all watertight. So what I'm gonna do is throw that on there now before I forget, because I always forget. I've learned through failure. So what I'm gonna do is crimp this on. While holding the crimping tool, you're gonna try to push it onto the wire so that way you're actually crimping, oops, crimping the wire when it doesn't pull out. So what you do is you give it a quick little, quick little tug to make sure that it's on there. You don't wanna pull it hard because you might pull it out, but you just wanna make sure that it actually crimped down on the wire. So, before we get too far along, I'm gonna make sure that these wires are still gonna work. So I'm just going to slide them in to the uh, bud connector here, just to make a connection. And we're gonna turn the switch on to see if the light comes on. Da -da -da. It works. Light works. We're gonna connect these. So, I'm gonna try to do this black wire. Don't have much room to work with here, but. Okay, we're gonna take the torch and we're gonna light the ends. I think I either need more fuel or another lighter. All right, gotta get another lighter. Okay, round two, we got a regular grill lighter. Hopefully this works. I like the torch because it's a little more precise but I think I'm running out of fuel. So the reason I'm using these uh, heat shrink butt connectors is because uh, one, we're on a boat and you kind of want to use watertight connections anywhere you can with any electrical components. Um, but not, one, not that it's just on the boat, but it's right here in the back of the boat where it's going to be getting wet all the time. It's on top of the deck, right here, where the wires are exposed. So it's on top of the deck where it's gonna be getting wet all the time, especially with overspray from the crab traps, when I'm washing the boat down. So you just wanna to try to make any connections as secure as possible to avoid corrosion or water getting in um so if anything a pelican will break this again before i have to connect it uh because the wires failed so here we go Boom, there we go. So now, pop this bad boy in there, try to slide this in. I don't know if 
I'm using too much force. I might break it. Let's put it, oh man, in its correct position. I want it facing up like that. Actually, just a little bit farther back. And we're in there. I think I'm going to zip tie the, uh, the wires together. I feel like they might get snagged on something that way. So I'm going to zip tie it. Keep it nice and clean and tight. So any commercial fisherman knows. Um, you always need like 1 million zip ties on hand at a given time. So they're one of the most important things you could have. It acts as a hose clamp, a uh, tourniquet, um, many different things. You gotta have them in different colors too, right? Variety pack. Okay, nice, clean. Dun -da -da -da. And it works. That's the important part. It works. It's fixed. Nice and secure. Until Pelican gets it next time.